I um it, it was actually the judge Judge Campbell in my tribunal when I was locked up. She was the one that said I find that Debbie was telling the truth that Thomas was the one that bought the weapons and I find that Debbie was telling the truth when she's talking about her indigenous connection to nature and her ability to um, talk to trees. I accept that that's an indigenous thing. Their reason for keeping me there was because of how I talked to Atua, because of how I talked to God and because of they didn't understand my physics when I tried to explain to them what biorhythmics was. They were trying to say um, that I was saying that I removed people's souls from their bodies. But they also said I was a rock, an R-O-C-K. So then I was really surprised when every time I'd go in and get a new doctor, they would ask, why did you take weapons? Why, you know, why do you talk to trees? Like, that's nuts, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm saying to myself, well, hang on a minute. But even the judge said that she found that I was telling the truth, that it wasn't me with the weapons and blah, blah, blah. So why is this being brought up? You know, total disregard for the law and just completely targeted me because of my indigene and my physics. And it's all documented and I've got it all there. <coughs> and, um, and yet I'm still being targeted. I um, I was not, you know, they um, they let me walk out without a diagnosis. They let me walk out without needing to go on medication or needing follow-up appointments. All the other girls I know that I was locked up, every sort of six months that they were out, they'd get a letter to say, come in. I've been, I've been out for, since, Was it September or no, since October of 22? Because they they have nothing. And when you've got nurses in that saying, why the hell is she in here? Like, get her out. And then the community care nurse writes them a letter and says, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, you know, because when I got out, I was given Tracy, who was to observe me for eight months. And um, she only observed me for a few weeks and then wrote them a letter and said, there's nothing wrong with her. <laughs> like, leave her alone. Because she sent me a copy of the letter. So all of this is all because of indigene, of my indigene and the physics and with PC Wright because she's jealous of the, of the relationship I had with Nick. But the thing is, I've never met him, I've never spoken to him. I've only communicated with him via email that I know of um, and I trusted him and he let me down and he's let my children down and they're all keeping silent to protect someone who is defending a child abuser which makes her a child abuser the judge said um, she didn't have those weapons so that's there. So if he tries to say anything, I can bring that up. And, you know, like if he tries to fight when I go and get the kids and they go to the police, I'll say, go to, go to Judge Campbell. She put in the tribunal that she found it wasn't me that took the weapons into the room. And she said after it, because, do you know, I had to sit there with instructional videos of First Nations and Māori people talking to trees to prove that I wasn't nuts. I had to actually show an instructional video to those racist, bigoted assholes. So, so yeah, so the next time he does it, I'm taking my kids, and then I will bring all of this up. The second the police turn up, the second the courts try and get them, I will bring it all up because it's all documented. And yet they're still, the fact that PC Wright is trying to plug that issue when there is no legal, legitimate issue, it was found in my favour that I, I had no weapons in that. It's a le legitimate legal issue that I was cleared on. The fact that she's insisting on bringing this stuff up means it's personal. 
She either hates me personally, she hates what I stand for, so my faith, my religion, my, you know, my spiritual, maybe she was a, like to do tarot or something and she's a bit crap and she hates the fact that I am what I am or it's because of Nick, you know, it can only be because of race, my faith, or because Nick was the one that was originally put on my case. And then if she's gone through his emails and seen where I had written him into that harvest, but I wrote him out, so he he can never be in my future because I wrote him out of my past. Um, that's all I can think of. But I don't think many people know that the judge found in my favour that it was Thomas that took the weapons in. I just don't say anything because I'm trying to protect my son. Because... Thomas is 16 in January, so with him I'd only have to wait until he was 16 and then there isn't a court in the land that could stop him. All the girls that I was locked up with, all their kids came back to them as soon as they turned 16 and they were all like self-harmers and suicidal and like, you know, had issues, like proper issues, nothing. So, uh... And then, yeah, just got to get Gabriel, but no, next time he neglects them, I'm taking them because I can just refer them to what Judge Campbell said if they say anything. Um, and the fact that social services, and like, I don't think anybody was told that that's what Judge Campbell had said, but it is what she said and it will be documented. Exactly. I would be denied... Um, I, I would be, she'd deny me my civil rights. She, she's supposed to be impartial and she's, she's not impartial. She's very, very, very one-sided. Um, and this is what I'm highlighting. So if they come and arrest me, um, I'll have to be charged, which means I'll have to go up against a, a judge. And I'll just say, um, the reason why I did this, Your Honour, is because when I came in on the blah, 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 I recorded... PC right, um, lying four times along with the lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Here's the video, here's the link, go to the CCTV footage. She has had me arrested because I um, got her investigated for lying and um, lying and um, throwing another police officer under the bus. So um, it would be the worst thing she ever did because then I would actually be put in front of someone who would have the power to do something should the West Yorkshire Police ignore our, our things for investigation. But if I, it said within three weeks, and if I don't hear anything within three weeks, it means I've chosen to ignore it, in which case then I'll go above their heads. So, you know, like I'm not, I'm I, whatever it is, that the devil tries to put in my past to stop me from rescuing my kids, um, he's going to fail because there is no way in hell I'm letting any of these bastards get away with breaking the law um, to protect their own jobs and reputations at the hands of me and my children suffering because then I, I'd just wait till they were old enough, put them on a plane and then uh, to, to my sister and then I'd end up in prison because I'm getting that friggin' angry. My mouth will end up putting me in prison because I'll conjure things out of it because I'm at eighth elemental now. Oh, this is a test. Okay. Bring it, Lord, bring it. This is a test because I'm an eighth elemental to see if I'll use the dark side of my gift. I've called judgment. That thunderbolt will hit them. God will go after them. I've called judgment. I'm not going there. They're not worth it. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. That was close, because I can conjure with my words now. And nothing makes me angrier than having to fight for my children and my indigenous. That was a test. 
Nice try, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> well, not Satan, devil. <laughs> Satan's the good guy. Satan would be the one that would open the gates when God kicked all the guilty responsible for all of this down into the underworld. So, yeah, nice try, devil. I caught that quick. So I hope I mean I hope that means I get an award. <laughs> Do I get an award for that? I wasn't evil. <laughs> I could have been if I wanted to. I would have been justified, but that was a test. Got it. See, that was a trip into the underworld. Did you see that was a trip into the underworld? Did you see how fast I got myself out of that? Whereas other people would fester and wallow in the anger and stuff and it would consume them and it would pull them down and drag them down and they'd get depressed. Whereas I expressed it and I got it out and when as soon as I recognised what was going on, I switched it. So now you know, pass it on. So what One thing that people need to understand now is I'm an eighth elemental alchemist, which means I can bring about someone's destruction just using the power of my voice. I don't need to hire a hitman like Chris. I don't need to do anything shady like Chris. I don't need to lie. I don't need to like use weapons or break the law or anything like that. I can bring about someone's demise just by speaking it into existence now. It used to be I had to write it down. Now I just need to speak it. And I'm a gatekeeper, which means I'm ordained by God to bring judgment on people. And if that means having to go to the dark side to do it, then I am fully ordained to do it. And that means I will not be punished for it in the eyes of God, which means it will not be considered a sin. Because I work for the Council of Elders, I work on behalf of everybody's ancestors. And they trust me to take care of the people in their bloodline who are bringing disrepute to their ancestral reputations because all of that stuff matters to the Akashic records. And when there's a bad apple in the bunch, it doesn't take long for the other apples to spoil. It just takes one bad apple. And PC Wright is a bad apple, and Christopher Black is a bad apple, and Santaro is a bad apple. They're all bad apples. And I've been put here to stop it, because these are people who are having influences over the way people think and feel and invest their hearts and invest their money. Um, and it's an abomination. It's a sin against the gods. And she sits there giving it large about God and, you know, having protection from her ancestors and stuff like that. And it's just like, do you have any idea how obvious you're making it that you're trying to distance yourself from your connection to Chris? I've been watching her because she's part of the lawsuit. And she's she when I brought her up, when I mentioned about how she'd started being flashy with the way she dressed, she started dressing down again. <clears throat> when I talked about um, how she's a false prophet and God hates her, basically, she started talking more about God, started pretending to try and be like all, uh, oh, I'm just, you know, sweet and innocent and, you know, I'm, I'm stepping into this connection with my ancestors and... Then she even had the audacity to do a reading about the prophecy coming true when in 2022 she called me the Antichrist. So she's trying to give off this false impression to people like, I'm not, I'm not like that anymore. Or, I'm not like that. She's got it all wrong. I love God and nature and my ancestors. And it's like, no. Oh, God, no, sweetheart. No, they've sent me to hunt you down, and you will be hunted down. You will pay for what you've done. Like, it doesn't work like that. You can't, you can't commit those sort of sins 
and then think just because you know you dress down again and act a bit humble that you're gonna get away with the sins that you've committed a sin is a sin the bible talks about mistakes and the bible talks about sin and a sin has to be paid off <laughs> and she will pay for her sins just like all the rest of them so just by me talking I have made it happen. She will go down. Thunderbolt of lightning, very, very frightening. Yeah, I've just spoken her downfall into existence, as with PC Wright. So now we sit back with our popcorn and we wait to see what happens. But um, they'll be taking Chris with, her too, with them too. Yeah, see, that's the thing. He's tried to make out like I'm this violent angry aggressive bully um when in actual fact the only time i ever got angry was defending my children like when he picked thomas up and when he was like four or five and throttled him and thomas's head was like bouncing back and forth and he was going oh you know like he throttled him so hard and shouted in his face why have you ruined my life that's what he said to his own son that stuff sticks, sticks with a kid. I very nearly pushed him down the stairs and I wish to God I had because then all of this would be over. I'd, I either would have been found um, not guilty, self-defense, or um, I'd be out of prison by now. I would have just sent them home to my sister and I would have been out of prison by now and none of this would have even been an issue. But um, because I had to master my virtues and temperance and you know, like I, I have to remain calm, learn to remain calm. I'm going to be a businesswoman in that and I, I can't fly off the handle and I have to be careful how I use my words now because of being an eighth elemental. So that was a test. I'm glad I caught it because I could have, I could have said things in a way that was more destructive than they needed to be because I put anger into it. However, once I made myself a coffee and cleared my head, I was able to bring judgment into it because of reasoning and logic, <sighs> which means that was a test. See, the sand tarot thing is because I had said that, sh that she has a connection to Chris, I, that they're all in on it and that she does readings based off things that I've posted online. Um, and they all tried to say I was nuts. Chris said, she's nuts, they're not, you know, she's nuts, blah, blah, blah. And that's one of the big contentions with them is the Santaro thing, but I know she's in on it. I know she is. I sent an email to my ex-best friend and within a day, I think, she'd done a reading based off the email that I'd sent him. She called it the ultimatum. Um, and then when I did my um, revelations post on Instagram, she did a reading called Revelations. That's the one where she called me the Antichrist. That's when I knew she was in on it. That's when I knew she was trying to um, slander me, trying to speak into existence my the ruining of my reputation and then that's when i made the post um rise up i think it is um where i you know was saying about the false prophets and that and then it was like the next day or something that's when he put the cocaine in my pizza like she gave him it's almost like she gave him the the word to flip the kill switch um, and then that's why I did the recording when I got like locked up making my public statement about the terror readers, the false prophets and that, because I knew one day, even though the doctor stood there calling me nuts while I was telling them what I was about to record and blah, 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 they wanted to see what I was writing down and everything. <sighs> um, that's when they decided I needed the medication. Um, but I knew, just record it, 
because one day you're going to play it back in court and everyone's going to go, oh, that's what she was talking about. Huh. So now we just look like racist, ignorant assholes. <laughs> so, um, and then because I will be able to get their emails, uh, their email accounts and social media accounts looked into to see if they've, if they've had any communication. And because my lawyers will have to um, issue her, uh, you know, subpoena her to be a witness um, to give evidence, like she'll have to do, like give Zoom evidence, she'll have to get a lawyer in that. Um, she'll have to be, she'll have to tell the truth. Do you know Christopher Black? And if she lies, then she's, you know, that's perjury. Um, but I don't think it's going to get that far because I think as soon as I send my lawyer to her, she's going to sing like a effed up goose. Thank you for listening. <laughs> You're a good friend. <laughs> I love you. Go back to sleep. Mwah. This video is one of the ones I'm going to use in court, which is just going to be hilarious to prove my science, right? So this is one of the videos that I said she was talking about me. She wanted this video to be about me because her and that Adelina Bon. Um, they were talking to my students and stuff and they hatched this big plan to get rid of me so that they could take over. Santaro talks about this business that they have in one of her readings. It's something to do with um, the empires burning down or something. And she's talking about how it's a group of spiritual people, a spiritual collective, and there's infighting and everyone ends up going their separate ways and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, like, come on, guys, can't we all just get along sort of thing. And I, that's when I knew she's talking about, you know, because they're all tarot readers in that and they – I think they have like a business on the side where they, because I had originally come up with an idea to do like an online tarot reading business where you could choose your tarot reader, you know, and I, and um, she talks about it being a, not a wellness center because I was going to call it a wellness center. She called it like a spiritual community or I can't remember what she called it, but um, that's when I knew and then there was other readers that I was watching who I was called to watch by the ancestors who were talking about this tarot reading business. These readers doing these readings and hating the job because they don't like the boss and, you know, it's stressful and blah, blah, blah. So I know that it's almost like God and the ancestors are taking me to, were taking me to all the tarot readers that all know each other. I've been able to kind of loosely connect Chiron intuition to the Jason Ortiz. It's just, he talks about... Martin and the tarot reading stuff that they all do like he knows them personally and he is from New York. However, he could just be also picking up on the same storyline as me because what I've noticed is that when I watch these tarot readers, I'm able to upload things for them to see. So with great power comes great responsibility. So if, if, I say to them, tell me what's happening with Chris. They'll do a reading where um, they'll tell me what's happening. And that's how I've been able to, because I lost my students, you see. 
I had to test quantum magnetics on someone. And so when I, you know, because I want to design my own tarot cards, I've well, my, my Ascension deck, um, I'll do the tarot cards after they complete the Ascension deck trial. But, um, you know, I've had to study all this stuff for years because I was a card reader myself, but my sister was a tarot reader. My, me and my, three of my sisters were like normal card, you know, cardamancy, cardamancy. Um, and my other sister, Paula, was a tarot reader. So, like, this is my life. It, my aunties, my Arab aunties and that used to do all this stuff. It's in my blood. So it offends me when people fake readings and use their personal life to make money um, selling the impression that they're intuitively reading someone's future. So I've had to put it all to the test and document it all, putting myself out there, being ridiculed and mocked online and behind closed doors, knowing that once I got on the stand and I presented my evidence, everyone would see exactly what I was seeing and go, oh, she was telling the truth the whole time. She's just that good. But it's just I had to be an eighth element first. I had to finish my ascension. But now that I have, I see everything. But in this unleashing, she wanted it to be about the night that, because remember, I said that they'd planned that attack on me, that it had been planned, that Rocio Ray Nunez with that um, ghost in the pizza reference for the Instagram when she said, how did you know it was me? And then changed her name to Rocio Ray Nunez. Ghost in the pizza means cocaine on the pizza. And she sent that to me like a good year and a half before he put the cocaine in the pizza. So they'd been planning it for a while. And she wanted that unleashing to be about um, them confronting me that night when I hit record. So now, I said to the guy at, I said to Jeremy, was it, no, Anthony, no, Jeremy, I think, at the New Zealand High Commission, something told me to hit record that night after he left the house and I told him not to come back until I'd figured everything out. Like, I know what I said, I know what you've done. And then I blocked him. Um, and I said to Jeremy, something told me to hit record that night. And nobody looked at the evidence and the ones that did thought I was nuts and, you know, I got treated like crap and poisoned and starved and, you know, skin flesh rotting, abandoned from my children, my children being abused and everybody ignoring it, me being abused and everybody ignoring it. Um, I was almost killed and everybody said I was crazy, blah, blah, blah. But when I said to him, but now I know why I had to record it because when I get all this on the stand, all the dots are going to be connected. And she wanted that reading to be about me with her and Adelina and Chris and that confronting me for supposedly being a bully because he tried to tell people that I was bullying him. And it was the other way around. I, I didn't have the strength to bully him. I was using all my strength to record and document everything behind closed doors, not knowing I was doing it because of all the drugs he was putting in my system. And then having to discover all these videos and messages that I've been leaving to myself, then suddenly realising that because I knew what was coming, I'd set everything up in the past, all ready to go, to hand over to the lawyers and the judge in the future. But the thing is, I understand how physics works and I understand quantum magnetics because it's my science. I know it better than anyone. It's my baby. It's my secret. Often, the atom, and that reading is actually a fractal. It's two fractals. Often, the atom of consciousness, the atom of God. That reading is a fractal, and it's not only talking about me taking PC right down, but it's also talking about me taking Santaro down. I made her predict her own downfall at the hands of my eighth elemental alchemy. That's how powerful I am. And she charged people money for that. I've got it on my Instagram with um, a fake account um, trying to sell one of my students tarot readings that I traced back to New York. Um, I've been able to trace things back to Orange County and all that where my ex-husband lives. So I've 
I've got the paper trail. I've connected all the dots. The, the threads to the web are all there. I just had to wait for it to go ping in order for me to crawl down on it and catch the prey. And by Chris making that complaint and by PC Wright doing what she did, she pinged the web. And now here comes the spider. Because spider is the totem for surveillance and observation and CCTV and remote viewing and um, the eighth element. <laughs> and an ascended spider totem is the totem for the eighth element. Eight eyes, eight legs, eight element. So, yeah. You see now why I have to turn my life into video games and movies and that. You wait till I tell you about um, The Soul Collector. It's going to be a psychological thriller that just, just messes people up. However, in a good way. <laughs> like it's going to mess with your head because I know how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, The Soul Collector's... I love the quantum menace, but the quantum menace is more, you know, targeted towards a younger audience, whereas the soul collector is pure, going to be like R18, like you're going to have to be, yeah. <laughs> the boys and I have been working on it for ages, but I had to say to the boys that I, I had to do the right thing by my conscience, so I'll put biorhythmics into it, so at the end of the game, um, by the time you complete the game, you're brought back to normality. <laughs> like, we were actually considering with the Soul Collector and with my the um, biorhythmic AI game that I want to make that, you know, um, gets rid of paranormal activity and depression and anxiety and PTSD and blah, blah, blah. Um, I might have to, that might have to come with a, you might have to sign a legal waiver for that so that we don't get sued if someone gets freaked out and takes the helmet off before completing the game you have to complete it because when I take you down there I have to bring you back up again I have to I'm contractually obligated to by your ancestors and gods and if you don't complete that and you like make the situation worse you can't sue me for it <laughs> but I'm hoping I can get it to the point where um, I can give rehabilitation centers and hospitals and you know mental health places I can give them like give it to them they don't have to buy it I will will give them the game and then instead of medicating their patients and um, maybe like if the really busy and maybe not giving the patients or whoever the time care and attention they need they can just put the helmet on and you know they wouldn't need to be there for much longer like i i can f fix them i can you know my games will fix it. it it will be better than medication and better than therapy um and then it will take the pressure off mental health services and hospitals and rehabilitation centers and that because you know most of the problems like I can fix the psychological and emotional problems I might not be able to fix the physical problems but when the vagus nerve is healed when the pineal gland is decalcified um, a natural side effect of that is healing obviously I can't grow back limbs of of military personnel who had them blown off you know with um, IEDs and stuff like that but I'll at least be able to make them be proud of their journey as a survivor and turn it into a positive thing you know and not to be seen as a punishment because that's one of the things that really hurt when I used to give um, creative empath therapy to my military personnel is that they thought that a lot of the stuff that was happening to them was um, a punishment, like, you know, that they'd done something to deserve it. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, once I've 
got it all made in that and I know that it works for sure. I mean, I know it works. It works with the candles and that, so I, I know it'll work with the game because it works with the stories. Like when I tell people the story, my stories in that it works, so I know it's going to work. But then I can like offer it to, and like, you know, like old, old people's homes. Um, and it would be interesting to see um, with um, people with like dementia and Parkinson's and that, I'd be really interested to do a trial study on that to see if my biorhythmics could help that in any way, especially with ghost memories and dementia and that. But I mean, that's just a whole nother thing. That's just me being scientific and wanting to find guinea, guinea pigs to allow me to explore the full potential of my biorhythmic AI video game experience. <laughs> Gabriel came up with a character for um, the art of creation. He wears like a shirt. See with that tarot reading, see what happens when I watch people, especially like tarot readers in that. Um, I see a language that they don't know they're speaking. The only way I can describe it, it's like, I hear a language in between the words people speak. It's like a whole different coded language. It would be like someone speaking English and French at the same time, like saying the word in English and then French and then English and French, except the French is like a French that nobody in the world understands but me, like it's a real language sort of thing. I see the French while everybody else sees the English. Um, mirrored, mirrored language, mirrored reality. I, I reflect their true selves back to them. And you eventually tell on yourself because the conscience can't lie because the conscience is in the purest light the further away you are from the light the less of a conscience you have chris has no conscience but at the time she was doing those readings she obviously still had somewhat of a conscience and it was telling on her and i just knew that if i watched long enough I would see the whole book. I'd be able to read the whole book and put it together and then hand it over to the judge and say, this reading is about this, this reading is about that, this reading is about this, and show her the evidence. Like, this is the reading. I sent this email to my ex-best friend, and then she did this reading. Look what she says in this reading and compare it to what I said in the email. This is the reading she did based off this Instagram post. Look what I said in the post. Look what she says in her reading. And then, like, you, it's undeniable. Like, once you sit down and look at it all, it's undeniable. Um, but they told each other, it doesn't matter what she says, don't give anything away that we know each other, but she's telling on herself. Um and that awakened to spirit and Voyager Voyage and that did the same thing. They told on themselves. Once they all started realizing they were in deep doo-doo, they started trying to distance themselves because there's a dramatic change in the, the kind of readings they started doing once they realized they were in trouble. Um, and they started becoming more about um, being on my side and just being like, oh, you know, guys, I'm just like this hardworking mum and, you know, with God and ancestors and look at me. And that um, awakening to spirit keeps doing readings about the old oak men. And male trees aren't allowed to talk. Ma male trees aren't the ones that are... The male trees aren't in the council. Male trees are the protectors. Male trees protect the female trees. Um, and male trees aren't on the council of elders. 
they protect the Council of Elders. So she's doing readings, her and Adelina were doing readings based on mythologies that actually defy the laws of universal law. They go against the occult laws of the universe. Male trees aren't allowed to be on the council. They can't give advice. And she keeps talking about these old oak men speaking to her, which means... <laughs> <laughs> It's actually what she's doing. She's actually suffering from dissension psychosis. <laughs> it's all in her head. <laughs> and I'll be able to bring it all up because I've got the evidence because it's my, it's my science. <laughs> it's so funny. And they charge people money for this stuff, girl. So see what I was saying about how they're an upside down world, how they live in upside down land. They thought they were the ones being all like the big powerful readers and the big I am, but they didn't realize they were actually an upside down land with the sands of time running out um, and that they were actually telling on themselves and bringing about their own downfall. <laughs> <laughs> because they're idiots, because they don't know what they're doing when they're dealing with the occult. So they've tried to mirror my work and mirror me, not realising that they were on the wrong side of the mirror. <laughs> and now they're all realising that the sands of time are running out and they're at the bottom of the hourglass because they were arrogant and thought that they had permission from the universe to do what they've done and that's not the case at all it's just I had to sit and be patient and wait long enough for them all to start telling on themselves because eventually the devil does have to announce itself and so I've just been documenting everything for the day for when this goes to court because it's just it's gonna it's gonna be hilarious because yeah <laughs> it's not Brian Froud's fault because he's the one that did the artwork. It's not his fault, but he, he, he's smart enough to. I think he he should know. But he should do his research. Like you can't take mythology and folklore and that on face value. You have to do your research if you're going to be putting it into things that predict people's future or decide someone's outcome. Which is why you know with you with your gin and tonic. Um, you know that I've got your back with that. I won't let you put anything in there that's going to have a detrimental effect on anyone who plays your game. So, um, but with them, no, it's like, yeah, no, have at it, Satan, take them, open the gates, kick them down, boop, gone. It's just, it's hilarious. So, yeah, so if you actually watch Awakening to Spirit from about January of 22 until now, and you'll actually see her slowly descending into psychosis it's been it's fascinating to watch it, it, it's fascinating whereas um with san it's more that she's falling deeper into um narcissistic sociopathic tendencies because she cares about how people see her she cares what people thinks which is why when i said um, I just saw San do a video where she was like all dressed up to the nines and wearing like um, crystal jewelry and stuff like that, which goes to prove, you know, she's 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 trying to um, she's flashing the cash. She's making it obvious. She's getting money from somewhere that she's not talking about, and um, when I mentioned it in a post she immediately started dressing down again. So she watches my posts and she listens to what I'm saying. She's taking notice and she's trying to change herself accordingly. But I'm just documenting it all because the more that she does it, the more it's obvious that she's watching my every move. So it's like, you keep doing it, girl, because it's just going to add more money to my bank when I take you all to court. The other thing is, is that there's a reading that Adelina did where <clears throat> she's talking about a different, she's talking about like speaking Scottish and then she goes, I'm sorry, Scottish, 
she goes Scottish speaking Scottish and she goes oh, I'm sorry if I offended anyone from Edinburgh if I got it wrong or something like that and I thought well oh, that was interesting like why would she specifically say Edinburgh where Chris is from and the date of the reading would have been around the time that they all started gathering around to bring about you know this great plan so I'll bring that up like because I'll have to you know Rebecca she's going to have to come and give evidence so I'm going to bring that reading up and why did she say I'm sorry if I offend if, if I offend anyone from Edinburgh why specifically Edinburgh because you'd say oh my god I'm sorry if I offended anyone from Scotland because that's what I do if I'm sorry if I offended anyone from Spain or I'm but I don't say I'm sorry if I offended anyone from a specific so that piqued my interest and then she does this other reading where she's talking about someone receiving like um a payout and a lawsuit and a blah 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 and being recognized and yada yada and basically the prophecy she's predicting the prophecy but then she says but I'm not talking about me I get myself out of the way before I sit down and do my readings but it was a it was for cancer and she's a cancer and she goes yeah but this isn't about me and I thought, why would anyone assume this was a reading about her? So see, their conscience is telling on them. They're giving themselves away. It's like they were trying to put themselves into position to receive the prophecy, which means they literally tried to rewrite the Bible. And now you see why God is so angry and why God has given me this power to take them down. Because they're, they're calling Christians in the Bible and God a liar. And Sam Caro had the audacity to call me the Antichrist. So if the West Yorkshire Police don't hurry up and get off their blind asses and rescue my boys and bring justice to this situation and get me my recompense so that we can get the hell out of here. <coughs> Just wait to see what we'll do next. And every day that has passed since I've known since I've known that my children were being abused because I'll know from their records when they watched videos when they went to certain links and blah 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 where I was saying look what he's doing to my sons um starting from the day I rang them and said I think my ex has just tried to kill me or whatever it was I said I was high on drugs forgive me but it was something like I think he's just put something in my pizza or something he's tried to put something in my system or I don't know the 99 calls 999 calls there um, I'll add more money to the lawsuit I'm going to make sure that there's there's nothing left that, that they won't even have toilet paper to wipe their bums by the time I'm done with them but ending on a high note <laughs> how cool are the games and movies going to be <laughs> Like, how can you not turn this into video games and movies and an animated series? I have the best life. I have the best physics. I have the best supernatural powers. I, I My superhero gifts are way better than anything of that of a Marvel character, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Me, me and my boys think what we are is awesome. <clears throat> so I controlled the sun. <laughs> I asked the sun to calm it down so my boys could have internet again. And she did, like within a minute. <laughs> so, you know, how can you not turn this into entertainment? I'm choosing to turn it into, you know, comedy and entertainment and something lighthearted, whereas Chris took everything that my boys and I created and turned it into something dark and twisted. So it's good, you know, like your game, making it, you know, fun and fun and bubbly and it because it, it helps turn your negative and situation into a positive experience for those who are going to be a part of your journey so you know like I said with great power comes great responsibility so yeah it's just oh my god it's getting so exciting I'm just so excited I said to Gabriel last night I can't wait to do the voice of Shirley Whittacombe 
I'm so excited to do her voice for my, you know, um, the art of creation. You and I will have to we'll do... I'm trying to think if it would be architecturally possible to make the art of creation foundation look like the Tower of Oracles. <laughs> I, I know that it's glass on the outside. What I can see of it. I had a dream about Martin this morning. Um, he looks so different, covered in tattoos, and I put my hand on his face and I said to him, "What have you done to yourself?" And um, he started crying and he said, I'm so sorry. And I said to him, why did you do it? Like, you were supposed to be, this was supposed to be us stepping into this, you know, what I'm about to step into, what I'm stepping into with games and all, like this was supposed to be us, the Art of Creation Foundation was supposed to be it was supposed to be our thing. And he didn't say anything and then he was kissing me and I I couldn't like I couldn't I couldn't let him touch me because I kept seeing all the women and Courtney and Rocio and how much he broke my little boy's heart. Martin is the reason why Gabriel has given up hope that I'm ever going to find my true love because we all thought it was Martin. Do a lot of work together because we'll have our show loose lips. <laughs> if it's so far, it looks like a glass <laughs> Rubik's Cube, but I... So see what I was saying to you the other day about um, the end credit song to the Quantum Menace, I'm going to call it, but how did I know her name was Katie? <laughs> but how did I know her name was Katie? Da 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 da. <laughs> it's because I originally thought Adelina Bond's name was Katie, but it's not, it's Rebecca Wells. <laughs> Katie ended up being the woman he introduced my boys to the night he got locked, the, the night he got me locked up. <laughs> I thought he was originally, like, seeing Adelina Bond, Rebecca Wells, because I kept being told her name was Katie, and I thought her name was Katie. And because I knew that she, her and Sam and that were connected to this whole thing, because she lives in London, so she's not that far away, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that they plan to bring her over from London to confront me for some reason. Um... So then it was like <clears throat> when I found out that like when I when Gabriel found the photo of Chris and Katie Hamilton um, and confronted him and said, are you going to tell the truth to the police now and tell them that um, mum was telling the truth? Chris threatened to take the phone away. But then I was like, but how did I know her name was Katie? Like I, the wrong face, but the right name. How did I know her name was Katie? Because I said it that night, like it came out that night, and I said it was like the voice of God came down and said, you need to do everything I tell you to do, lock the doors, send him a message to say he's not to come here and start recording everything. And just trust me, like it's going to get a bit like oof, but just trust me, do you have faith in me? And I said, yes, Lord, yes. Just do it, uh, but I said just um, don't let my boys come to any harm. And I said um, when we come back to get like when this when it's all over, we get to walk away with a clean slate and enough money to never have to look back. And he just said, just remember the prophecy. And I thought, oh, okay, so this was the attempt on my life because the prophecy said that there would be an attempt on my life because of a blonde-haired woman. I mean, that could be Courtney, that could be Katie, that could be Adelina, like, you take your pick. 
but that was the prophecy. And I don't know whether they were going to try and make out like um, Rebecca was the girl from the Pacific, Pacific Islands that, you know, was going to be a part of this prophecy or, or, you know, was the one from the prophecy or what, whether they were going to try and replace you with me. Uh, so replace me with her or what, but, um, yeah, I said her name was Katie, and then I said to the boys, but how did I know her name was Katie? So that's what I said. The end credit for the Quantum Menace is going to be kind of like in a, um, I want to do it like in a, the style of like the jam. Um, yeah, but how did I know her name was Katie? <laughs> 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 I can't wait for this to go to court because I just I want it to put it all over the media because it's just so hilarious that like it's just the humiliation that these people are going to feel when people realise that um, it was God talking the whole time just through this little missing toothed indigenous big boob barefooted thunder voiced troublemaker. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to wake a lot of people up and make a lot of people very, very angry. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but my husband Martin actually wanted to be an actor. Um, and so one of the reasons for creating the Art of Creation Foundation, you know, for inner city kids and that, you know, to um, learn how to do media and movies and broadcasting and all that sort of thing was to help Martin you know we were going to have like a little theatre and all of that and um, yeah it was to help him you know like do some acting make movies and all of that but we were going to do it ourselves with the kids and that um, and we were going to take it to New York and yeah and have it there and I was going to like employ all his friends and give jobs to all the people in the neighbourhood and put money back into the inner city and God knows they would bloody need it now, but after he did what he did, I got removed and it sent New York in a whole different direction. If, if you know what New York looks like, looks like now, it's because Martin, when he came to the crossroads, he chose the wrong path. And now it's having a knock-on effect throughout New York and all of that because that's how karma works. So anyone who is involved in that tarot reading business and or anything to do with New York, they've contributed to the downfall of New York because that's how karma works. That's, that's really not fair, is it? But that's how karma works especially if these people have been buying into the lies and gossip and buying their um, stolen products and all of that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I got removed from New York. He chose the wrong path, so, yeah, so... But then <clears throat> the story got rewritten lies got removed, I saw the truth of everything, I realised that there's a bit of Andre's Dragon in every person I've met that's inspired me, there's a bit of you in there, there's a bit of armour in there, there's, there's a bit of Martin in there, there's a bit of like my brother and my dad, like everybody, there's a bit of everybody I know in Andre's journey. So, um, it's not that my story had to be rewritten, it's that it's just that it had to be seen under all the lies. Because, you know, you're living a lie until you see the truth. Once you see the truth, you can't unsee the truth. You can no longer live a lie. And that's what's happened when Martin made that decision to go in that direction. The lies got removed. It took a while. It's like God came along with a big fat eraser. 
and then I got to see what was underneath, which is the true story of Andre's Dragon. And, you know, it's it's almost the story of there's definitely Thomas in there, there's Gabriel in there, and it's almost the story of how I've been watching all the people in my life go through their ascension. Andre's Dragon, I'm everybody's dragon. I've been watching all of the people that I care about go through their ascensions in various ways and it's almost like I turned it into Andre's Dragon in 2019 to prepare me for the story I was going to tell in 2024 once I saw the truth under the lies. So Andre's Dragon is a story about everybody that I love and what they've gone through and how they've helped me ascend and how I've helped them ascend and how we've all been bit players in everyone's life because Santaro's a part of your life because she's a part of my life because she's a part of Chris's life because he's a part of Martin so Martin's a part of your life and that's what all my stories and books are it's all interwoven stories of all of our lives and the effect that Chris and his lies and Santaro and her lies and Rocio Reynunes and PC Wright and they're all their lies, Jeb's kingdom and the Shadowlands and the war that we've had to fight to protect all that is good and wholesome and pure. Um and becoming better people because of it. That's what Andre's Dragon is about. And with a little help from my friends. And it's we're all working together. And so Andre from Andre's Dragon is, he's a little piece of everybody I know. And what I've had to witness then go through in order to help me become an eighth element so that I could finally bring us justice once and for all. Uh, see, the other thing is as well, I don't know what lawsuit or case that they, they tried to have against me to stop me from succeeding and getting to America and fulfilling the prophecy and stuff like that. But whatever for whatever reason, it's caused the police and the FBI and whoever to have to listen in on everything I say. I don't say anything in public, I don't say in private. Um, and because I'm telling the truth, and my story doesn't change, even you've said that. But the thing is, by them doing what they've done to draw the attention of the law and military and FBI and whoever to my attention, as I've said many times before in the past, they've given me witnesses to the rising of my power <laughs> to the point where by the time I win my case and the lawsuits against them and my divorce or annulment um, it would be because I would have proven myself to be telling the truth and I am exactly who I said I was they will have no choice but to you know win it, like it, I can't not win <laughs> It's inevitable that I'm going to win. But the thing is, by them drawing attention of me to these people, it means that when it's over, a lot of people are going to want to work with me, <laughs> which is the prophecy. But, you know, once this was over, once the world know my, knew my name, um, I would never be able to walk down the street again, which is why I needed my husband to be a true protector. He was supposed to be in charge of not just, you know, the business side of my empire, but head of security <laughs> to make sure that nobody can get near me without getting through him because he loves me that much and he knows what I'm doing and who I'm doing it for and why I'm doing it and blah, blah, blah. And he loves me that much. He doesn't want anyone coming near me or touching me or whatever. My boy said men could look but not touch but I, I was not to give myself to anyone who 
didn't deserve to put a ring on my finger. He had to be somebody that they considered a man worthy of being called dad. They want a dad. They want someone they can call dad and actually mean it with their full hearts. See, <clears throat> um, finding that second SIM card and recording all the hackings and stuff. I've made that known publicly and to the police for years. I've been trying to let everyone know for years and nothing's been done about it. Under British law, that would be considered espionage, what they've done. If you look at what the definition of espionage is, it is also um, using technology to hack people's um, equipment um, and to um, control how they're seen to the public, basically. That's what they're doing by hacking into my phone. This is a highly, highly illegal activity and the only way that they would be allowed to be getting away with listening to my calls and, you know, monitoring my phone and everything I'm doing is if whatever legal thing that they claimed against me warranted the government and the police and that to listen in if there was a legal reason. So it's like, oh, yeah, we know that you're being hacked and spied and stuff, you and your boys and that, but... We have a legal reason for doing it, but now they're realising she was framed, she was set up, it was all a lie, she was telling the truth. And then what it's done is it's flipped and reversed. So instead of them coming after me thinking that I'm a terrorist or whatever it is that they've said, Um, to try and be the heroes at the end of it, it's flipped because they're an upside down land. So now the law's going to hold them responsible. I'll get the money that they thought they were going to get and the world will know my name because I've done it the right way because I did it standing in faith and truth. They tried to do it using lies and deception, thinking that they were on top, but they're actually on the bottom, which is exactly where Chris likes it. <laughs> Got to end on a bum joke. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something too. <clears throat> Whoever is listening in on all of this on the military side of things, whoever they have working in there like their covert ops, um, he needs to work on his camouflage because I've known that I've been watched for like ever. <laughs> so... I just knew and I said it publicly that by by them watching everything, I'd know that everything would be documented and recorded. So by the time I was ready to wrap this investigation up and hand it to them on a plate from a legal standpoint in a courtroom, um, their own evidence would work against them because they'd find I was telling the truth. Um, and anything that anyone tried to pin on me, it's just because, like I said, I set traps. And I can say, well, yeah, it's because I knew you were watching. And I know there's some people out there who have been itching to try and blackmail me with things, but I knew I was being watched. So I set traps. <laughs> I said it on my Instagram a couple of times, and I'm saying it now. <laughs> Because then I can say, well, yes, because I needed to prove that you were watching me. <laughs> so, yeah. I really should have been like a detective or something. But, yeah, whoever, yeah, they need to work on their camouflage. They're, they're not good. Um, primarily, I think, because they've let emotions get in the way. They've started, um, the, the more that they're falling in love with this story and pr the pr pride and honour that they have for what's, what actually, they're actually been a part of, um, it's, they've let their shields down. They've let their guards down. So I've been able to access them through the heart. <laughs> That's unacceptable. <laughs> 
Sniff out of it, boys. <laughs> you can't let the enemy get to you through the heart space. <laughs> God, I mean, <laughs> you need a better teacher. Whoever's teaching you, get rid of them. You need a better teacher because your camouflage sucks. <laughs> My father would have called you Big Jessies. He would have said that you were wearing big girls' blouses. Now, <laughs> shape up. <laughs> We've got a job to do <laughs> in a country to pretend. <laughs> Standard attention. <laughs> Protect your country. <laughs> you imagine if China, what would China do if they found out that all they had to do was defeat, like, America and British military covert operations was just to, like, give them hugs and cuddles? <laughs> <laughs> Operation Love Bomb. <laughs>